You have the Red Isengard player Mustafa on the left side against the Green Elven player Maru on the right side. Sirano is the map. It's a map from BFME2 and luckily for us we are able to use every single BFME2 map in Rise of the Witch King but also the other way around. And some of the sound, of sound effects are not working apparently. So we have two Malone trees coming up for the Elven player boys and two furnaces coming up for the Isengard player. Ali Chalushkan, thanks for the follow. Two furnaces. Rallying call is available for elves. And Mustafa, the Isengard player, is going to pick either Warchant or Kribane, depends on the start. Let's see if he's building the Uruk Pit or the Warg Pit instead. What is that? Barak's set, of course. Pretty normal opening from the Elven player. Two Malone trees, Barak's into the third Malone tree. And we will have Warg Pit start. For that reason, I'm assuming Mustafa is going to pick the Kribane from the spellbook. Yeah, Mishra of X got el eliminated yesterday. Unfortunately for from Maru, was a very interesting one. We have seen three times in a row goblins against elves. And I was expecting him to win as elves against goblins in the last game, but he made a couple of mistakes. The Mirkwoods, they got killed in no time. I remember this game. It was a really painful game for me, Shadow Fags. The matchup was favoring him, but Maru just played great with the goblins. Ali Chalushkan, first with the follow and now with the sub. Oh my goodness, man. Thanks for the huge support. Alakaliskin91 just subscribed. Thanks Welcome for the first time subbing. Crew. Okay, so Warpit and Urupit at the same time, and that's why he's picking the Warchant. I was expecting him to pick Kribane because of the whole ability from these war packs. But because the Uruk Pit, it kinda makes sense. The Warchant is just very, very good, you know? And any brand is also in the chat. Nice. Kizara o kadar coin verdi. Nerede ses? Bizi mi kupatıyorsun anlamıyorum ki. <gülüyor> Alright, he's gonna fight those Lorian warriors. Whole ability is available. He will be using that in combination with the aggressive stance. Look, the Lorian warriors, they don't care. They are just capturing this one. They are like, okay guys, kill us in the meantime, but we are gonna get some peasants on the field. I believe the peasants, at least for me, they are the worst unit from the inn. I don't like them, not even a little bit. I mean, they're gonna give you the chance to have like a second barracks, I guess, but... Come on now. I mean, there are way better units than the peasants. However, they are cost efficient because half the price in compared to the Lorian warriors from the barracks of the Alvin faction. In the meantime, um, almost level 2 by the way. Very well done. He can now just capture this for himself. The peasants, they don't have a chance against the mighty Urukai. Remember, this is no rebel of mindless orcs, ladies and gentlemen. These are Urukai. What a nice timing. Warchan has been used on the Urukai. Warpacks, don't fight this, don't fight this. You don't want to fight. Warpacks are dying against the Lorian archers. They are level 2, but it's... I mean, in this situation you can't run away anymore. Should be trying to save them. And they are level 2, you can save them. And they will be spawning over time. Urukai are tough and tanky as you can see. Level 2 unlocked. They are still buffed. Rallying Call is available for the Alvin player. He was not using it just yet. Volap is coming up too. And there comes the Crossbowman army. Yuldi is moving forward and more war packs are coming from Mustafa as well. Once again, I believe that's a very nice matchup. Should be winnable from both these sides. But you never know. Archers fl flanking, pretty nice. I like that. Crossbowmen are running it kinda down. You, you need pikemen now. You need pikemen. But I like the positioning of the Alvin player. Very well done. Hey Gloria Almighty, welcome. Yes, well, we are live. And also guys, if you are not uh, able to watch the live streams from the beginning until the end or if you are missing some games on the on the live stream on the Twitch, we created yesterday a brand new YouTube channel which will include all the Twitch live streams. So make sure to check it out please and subscribe if you haven't already. It's a brand new one from yesterday. And every live stream, every tournament game, everything that is happening on Twitch will be eventually uploaded to the YouTube channel. So it's gonna be a lot of uploads on the YouTube. They're gonna be also edited, just in case you are missing out and you are not able to watch live streams. And watching videos on Twitch is kinda tricky. I would always prefer watching videos on YouTube instead. So if you are looking for this kind of stuff, you find a brand new YouTube channel for this one. What happened to my, I mean, my original channel is gonna be of course still remaining, but I was barely uploading any videos from my own channel. I mean, from my Twitch channel to my own main YouTube channel because I was always trying to keep the content exclusively. I was always recording the videos 
off screen. And for that reason, I made a second channel, which will be, which is called BFME World. And this is gonna only, um, you know, maintain the videos from Twitch. But of course, the new or the main YouTube channel is gonna still be remaining. These emotes are hitting like a track. Exactly. What is the name of this channel? It's called Beyond, uh, not Beyond, BFME World. But I also shared in Discord, in the announcement channel, with the channel name. You can check it out there as well. Uh, YouTube, YouTube 2, exclamation mark YouTube 2 would be a nice command in the chat. If me world is the name. It's a huge attack, by the way, coming from the Elven player. Warcrider is being, doing a nice job getting into the backline. Lots of pikemen. Isengard might have trouble to defend this. In the meantime, he's going for the counter harassment with the war packs. Almost 6 power points collected. 400 command points available, but he has barely any units around. Elven players 500, 450 command points available now. And we get to see lots of pikemen. Urukai are now face tanking against archers. They are killing those pikemen in no time. Kribane is going to be used to debuff the enemy units to make them weaker. And make them lose. That's the channel, by the way, from Balindru. This one is not unique URL just yet. In order to get the unique URL, you need to, get, you need to be partner. So hopefully, we're going to become YouTube partner also with the second YouTube channel very soon. And for that, we need 1,000 subscribers. I believe we can do that until the end of the year. <laughs> Promote even on phone. Yeah, through that. Women and children, must stand up and fight. Women and children stand up and fight. <laughs> Almost 9 power points collected for the Elven player. We have 4 power points collected for Isengard after the Kribane and War chant. And remember guys, this is the finals of the Losers Bracket. It's a very important series. Whoever wins that will at least secure himself 30 bags. And the loser is gonna get only 10, so... 3 times the amount. So winning that is actually very important. And you not only get more money, but also you get... A chance to win the grand prize, which is gonna be $60. If you defeat Sauron not once, but twice in the best of nine. Okay, Alvin player is looking strong. In the middle of the map, he's building more and more Malon trees. Warc riders are badly damaged. It's 475 command points and 525 for Mustafa. So Mustafa is building now the second Uruk pit. No heroes on the field just yet. In this kind of situations, I believe Lourdes would be a nice choice because Lourdes, if the Carnage is able to have splash damage, that's gonna give him the chance to hit multiple units at the same time, which is pretty powerful. Commitment against the level 2 furnace. Nice clumping, I like that. And the Vork Riders can't do much, but observe. Nice protection from Maru. Really like to see that. I mean, the evil faction, the lack of, the lack of sustain, right? So you don't... Oh, that's a... Elvin Root. He has not the chance to cover this with his own Tainted Land. And Isengard doesn't want to go for the Tainted Land normally, you know? You want to go for the Devastation. Or maybe in this kind of situation, even Whiteman of the Unland. Tainted Land is not the worst, because it also gives you pillage, but there are much, much better choices for Isengard. And the best choice for the 10th power point is definitely the Devastation, which is going to give you lots of money in this instantly. Elven player maintains the army with the peasants. They are actually doing a surprisingly great job being the front line. What is happening here? War packs are looking for uh, pressure. Uh, can't do can do bets from my phone. No problem. I got you. I was already opening the bets. No problem. Urukai, the war pits might be taken down eventually. He needs Devastation now. I mean, not now, but he needs that as soon as possible. Double Barracks, no heroes on the field, and no transition into the stable either. And Isengard is kind of able to defend himself. He needed Whiteman. Yeah, my, I mean, I believe in this current situation, Whiteman wouldn't be that bad because he has no Lancers on the field, the Alvin player. That means Whiteman, they can actually be summoned on top of the enemy units, and you might be forced to use it if eventually defensively you know but i'm a huge fan of devastation because devastation is gonna give you so much extra money which can be used into recruiting a mighty hero like lords for example and i believe isengard doesn't have that much money right now and he could use the money from devastation really badly uruks are very expensive that's what i'm trying to say also you know uruks are very very strong but they are also the most expensive swordsman in the game so in order to maintain the double Uruk pit, you will need more money. As he keeps losing those furnaces all the time, it's gonna be hard to keep spamming units on the field. 
And Isengard is now going for the counter attack. Looks for a chance to get, to get into the backline. Kribane was used. Nice trample. He won't get punished for that, but he's gonna get... Oh, that's a bad disengagement. Should be running this direction, in my opinion, but it's fine. Rallying Call has been used offensively on the enemy units to debuff them. Rallying Call... I mean, Rallying Call has been used defensively. Kribane was used at the same time. Why Lavida just resubscribed for three months? Ahoy. Why Lavida, thanks for the, for the resub. For the third month with the primers, man. Thank you so much for the huge support and welcome back. Means a lot. Thank you, thank you guys. You guys are awesome. The Malone tree is going to be taken down. Wildman of Dunlin is going to be his choice. And will be summoned on top of the enemy units. Uh, I mean, it's not all, but what a timing. <laughs> what a timing. The lanes is, are arriving precisely when they mean to. Should we still spam emotes when somebody's up? Hell yes. Of course. That's the entire premise. So we have a goal, guys. And of course, not everybody has to do that. But you would be a cool kid when you do it. So when we get a new sub and you are sub to the channel by yourself, make sure to spam some of the emotes to just welcome the new member in the fellowship of the family. You know what I'm saying? That's why we have those emotes. So you can use them. And don't overcome it. That's a mistake. He's gonna lose this fight to the Lorian Archers. They're gonna even get so many experience points because of the statue. They are also leveling up 50% faster. That's a great commitment, but that's what I'm trying to tell you, you know? Oh, what is happening here? <laughs> Level 2 Rukai are running it down. One furnace hiding at the bottom left side. I like that. And also one offensive one. This one is almost level 2, by the way, guys. This one is being on the field now for a really long time. I would love to sub to you, no man. No problem, Mr. Effects. I know your problem. I know your situation. I don't even need to so say sorry. I mean, again, do it when you want it and can afford it. When it's not gonna hurt you guys. I don't want you to uh, feel forced to do that if you can afford it. You being in the chat is already more than enough for me. Trust me. So don't need to don't need to say sorry about that. And uh, Alvin Wood is available once again. 10 power points collected afterwards. The Alvin Wood is going to lead you to the end summon. Unlike with the Mist, which would lead you to the Eagle summon. And Eagle summon is most of the time a, a better choice. But end's going to give you the chance to eventually take down the enemy fortress. The level 3 furnace is going down. That's bad. He will be losing now 100 command points because of that reason. But actually, dude, level 3 furnace defending itself like a champion. Not even close, ladies and gentlemen. Not even close. KO. The winner is the level 3 Furnace. 6 and command points for Elves and 650 command points for Isengard. No heroes all game long. I cannot believe it. I would love to see Lourdes and that's why Devastation would be a better choice. But it's fine. The Wildman is gonna lead you to the Watcher Summon. Devastation was leading you to the, uh, to the Field of Fire Summon. So this is more like an aggressive pick from the Spellbook of Isengard. Haldir could be nice, Glorfindel could be great, but so far, nobody is getting any heroes. Will he just leave this level 2 furnace around this area? Seems like it, it's all about hit level 2. It's unbelievable how long this <laughs> one furnace is, you know, being around now. That's crazy. Level 3 furnace is hitting like a... <laughs> yeah, very true. And my man, Vulki talking with the primers for this 20 months, 20 months, 20 monate. Vulkit just resubscribed for 20 months. Ahoy, 20! Exclamation mark, exclamation mark. Pog. Immer nok liwon das wirns kennen. Zwa nimmer soviel schreiben aber gibt sikawida bessere tage laughing faced bussy. Ja, man, das stimmt. Keine schwierige Tage, aber ich danke dir vom ganzen Herzen, Vulki Talki. Und ich hoffe, dass wir uns mal wieder in Discord sprechen können. Vielen Dank. Uh, and also, your boy Goku, thanks for the raid with the party of two. Thank you so much. How is the finals going? Uh, going good so far. We are in the first game between Isengard and Elves. Uh, the first game in the best of seven. Back and forth, you know. Elves are pushing, they are, Isengard is defending, it's, it's the other way around. So pretty nice. Elven plays three power points away, even less than that for the... We have Lourdes finally on the field for the end summon. End summon will be threatening this, you know, fortress. Quite hard. It's a huge Elven army clumped, but keep in mind that this guy has um, splash damage. So if he can get inside the jeans, he can make something happen. Isengard can cover this if he wants to. He went for the devastation instead. 
Lourdes is diving in. Watch he's able to one-shot them, even through uh, the Alvin Wood buff. You see, he's able to hit multiple units at the same time, leveling up crazy. But ideally, you want to get inside this jeans. Imagine, imagine Shark Queen here, boys. Now the Carnage is gone, which means no more splash damage. He's only able to hit now units one by one. Imagine Shark Queen here. It would be such a dream situation. Lourdes is just a boss, you know what I'm saying? He's like, let me handle them. Me Lourdes, me smash, me attack, me kill. And summon. The last march of the end. Now is a perfect timing of you guys in the chat using the tribute. Hey, Lords, Lords, you are taking too much damage. Beautiful trample is incoming with the Vork Riders. Ladies and gentlemen, as Lords is getting away, not even close. Don't go there. Lords, you need to kill this. You need to kill this end, by the way. What are you doing? Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Are they going to be able to destroy it? Yeah, I believe they're going to destroy it. Oh my goodness, I can't believe that. I can't believe that. And the fortress is going down. Holy guacamole. The ants are hitting like a truck. He was not reacting fast enough. Hyder got crippled down. Be careful with Lords, don't lose him. Just take him down. Is he invisible or something? I don't know what's going on. But the Alvin play Mustafa, uh, I mean Major of X, not Major of X, sorry, I'm confused. Maru, that's what I'm trying to say, try again. Three times charm, of course, was able to destroy the enemy fortress, which is a huge, huge thing, because fortress, as you guys know, has a crazy impact in every single game. He has no more access to his power points, he needs to save up to 4,000 resources to be able to replace the fortress. That's gonna take you lots of time and get you out of the game. I bought three tributes. Where is sound? I don't know, man. Sometimes the sound, I believe, is kind of bugged. That's what it is. Is the TTS Brian? I don't know. I was setting that up long, long time ago, Signori. Can't even remember that. Tribute is sleeping, yeah. Winter sleeping time is incoming, boys. The Shadow and Flame makes it way harder than the base game. Yeah, but it's fine. It's fine like that. I don't like a couple of the mechanics in Shadow and Flame mods, to be honest with you. For example, that the units, they don't have access to fire arrow anymore, that's pretty bad. I don't like this kind of stuff. I mean, I like to give me one normal one, is still better, you know what I'm saying? It's still better. Oh, he's down a lot, like he's down to 275 command points, look his money, he's... Does he have a builder? Yeah, he has a builder, building a tower. I believe he has only, uh, he has also the second builder around this side. But once again... You know, with this many command points, trying to save for the 4,000 is going to be nearly impossible. You can get the points back, of course, guys. I'm going to try to fix the sound effects uh, after this game. Don't know what's happening. You guys were just abusing the Forgonto many, many times in the, in the live stream, I believe. And that's why <laughs> it stopped working now. I just don't like the no fire arrows and for some reason Haradrim still count as spears. I mean, I don't know, like, you can't recruit Aragorn anymore. And that's something I don't like that much as well. And I don't know, man, I'm just like normal, casual uh, BFME1 player, you know what I'm saying? I played BFME1 and there are, uh, like, when you overchange stuff, that's not gonna make it better in most of, the, most of the cases. That's why, I don't know. Level 5, Lurt is a one-man army with, you know, the tower with crossbowmen inside of that. Those three production buildings have to be, have to be, I can't even talk, I'm mambling. Have to be protected, because if he loses them, where are you? Where are you, Lurt? Hello, darkness, my old friend. Nice to hear you from you again. Shanks is not a singer, I know. On the beautiful map for of Eisen. we have the green elven player Maru, the winner of the previous game, against the red. For Gondor, for Gondor, for Gondor, for Gondor, for Gondor, for Gondor. Against the red dwarf, <laughs> dude, the chat is going nuts now. This for Gondor became a super meme in this channel already. What's going on? <laughs> two for two minecraft's coming up for dwarves, and two Malone trees coming up for elves. So pretty normal opening for both the players. <laughs> Okay, so what's the plan? I mean, I mean, I believe as elves, you need to kind of play it a bit slow and a bit more defensively. Magonda! 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 
Shut up, Boromir. Shut your mouth. Two Malone trees into the barracks, into the third Malone tree. That's gonna be a pretty normal start, even though the third Malone tree is being built a bit more offensively. On the other side, we see Mineshaft, Mineshaft, Hall of Warriors into the third Mineshaft. That's a pretty normal build order from Dwarves. And I like this a lot. I don't like the, when you are trying to build your third Mineshaft really offensively, because if it's not gonna work out, it's gonna be backfiring big time, and you might actually lose the game without being able to do anything about that. Don't stop spamming for Gondor, 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 for Gondor. Guys, I mean, for your information, we have no Man of the West faction in this game yet, and there is not even the chance that we might see Boromir any soon. So, those sound effects, I was, you know, initially creating them to use them when there is something happening with Boromir or with Treebeard or with that and with that. So it's gonna be situationally. But you guys are just abusing the Forgonta and you already know what's gonna happen. You know? They're gonna cost... The Forgonta is gonna cost 20,000 points in the next stream. For what? For Gondor. For what? For Gondor. For what? For what? For Gondor. For what? For what? For Gondor. For what? For Gondor. For what? For Gondor. I got you, girl. Don't say no more. He's creeping the Vork layer. That's pretty nice. Dwarves are gonna creep the trolley at the bottom left side with the pikemen. Rallying call is available for elves, and rallying call is also available for dwarves. And dwarves will get the chance to. You created your own monster. You are Dr. Frankenstein. <laughs> yeah, I mean, trust me. If I could foresee the future, I would handle the <laughs> differently. <laughs> All right, Lorian Warriors level two. We will see hobbitses, a sneaky little hobbitses, as Gollum would like to call them. Guardians coming up next. There is a mineshaft at the bottom left side, and the builder, the second one, is moving to the top right side. He might be able to scout this area and build a mineshaft right here. This means this Malone tree is gonna be taken down in no time. Like Elven play is actually committing against the Vork layer. Offensively, on the left side. So, and it's gonna be uncontested, because Guardians, they don't have vision. He's creeping actually quite a lot. I like that. Like, that's a very interesting playstyle from the Alvin player. Just to get as much from the map as possible. Remember, on the map for Sufficent, we have many, many creeps. We have two troll layers and in total four work layers. And Alvin player was able to creep two of them already. With a potential chance of also creeping this one at the bottom Magondo! right side. That's gonna make me ask myself, how many channel points do you guys actually have? Holy moly! What's going on? <laughs> Alright, Guardians, I mean, I was just giving you many, many points back, that's what it is. Guardians, you can always get behind the building. But in those kind of situations, use the Bombard, that's gonna give you the chance to shoot over the building. Oh, he's trying to lure the troll into the archers, I believe. But that's not gonna be possible. Now fight them, Guardians. Guardians of the Galaxy, just fight, fight Come, them. my friends. It is this is not a end. This is a Malon tree, by the way. I mean, this tree beard, I think, is really old. You know what I'm saying? Like... He thinks now the Malone trees are ends. It is likely that we go to our doom. Did you guys know that uh, the guy who is, you know, three beard, this is the same voice from Gimli. So Gimli, the actor of Gimli, was also making the voices for three beard. Alright, so what's going on here? He will be able to defend himself normally. Uh, we have King Brand as the first hero of the game. Level 2 is already unlocked, that means Slapshot is available. One Lorian Warrior, a Lorian Warrior Battalion was able to survive. They are level 2, they will be respawning over time. This attack should be defended, no problemo. Was actually quite close, closer than I was expecting it to be. Uh, archer range for the ex Rovers, okay. I was expecting Battle Wagons to be honest, but it's okay. You need to get some uh, sounds from the Hobbit movies as well as so we get we can get some Elven and Dwarven sounds. Yeah, I mean, if you guys have anything in your mind, 
just let me know in Discord. You can always share the sound effect you would like to have in the stream and we can always implement that. You guys know I'm always doing everything for you. You know what I mean, right? So if you want to see and listen to other sound effects, just let them share, it with, share them with me in Discord and we can just upload them and bam, you are able to use them in the upcoming stream. Mineshaft with many, many units inside. King Brand will be used to deal with the Slorian Warriors. Extroverse, they are trying to disengage. Slapshot, Slapshot, beautiful. Level 3, and you see how fast it's recharging? It makes this glued to the most cost-efficient hero of Dwarves. Is this best of 7? Yes, that's best of 7, my friend. The finals is always best of 7, and the grand finals is going to be best of 9. So, by the way, if you missed the beginning of this stream, this is the finals of the loser's bracket. It means... The winner of this series, either Maru or Mustafa, they need to fight in the finals, in the grand finals against Sauron. It's gonna be best of nine, hopefully tomorrow. Tomorrow is gonna be the final of this event. Back and forth game. The builder is gonna get in safety. Quite, uh, I mean, was really close actually. Big fight. I don't know about this fight though. Why would you fight them in the melee range? Luckily, King Brand is doing a great job. And the thing is, you can't level up your extra words with the train archers, you know? That's only, post that's only working on your Man of Steel. So the link for downloading with me one doesn't work. It says it has too many downloads. Really? Um, if this is the case, maybe somebody else can send you a different link where you need to download the files from. I believe um, there is like a daily limit of 200 people and I believe many, many people were downloading the game today. What time is the final tomorrow? Tomorrow around 8 p.m. GMT plus 2. So pretty much like in 24 hours from now. Like 23 hours from now, sorry. King Brand is doing good, but the Alvin player is able to win those fights. Hobbit Summon will be used on top of the enemy units. King Brand has been unfortunately taken down. There, there lies his corpse. The Hobbits uh, kind of not gonna do anything in this kind of situations. Maria Dog, Brandy Bog, Frodo Baggins, they're gonna all die one by one. The Ring Bearer, the Ring Bearer, Frodo, Sam. Oh no, where is Gandalf to see? Look at them. They are the best friends. They lie even, they live together, they die together. Bad boys for life. This is best of nine for both of them or disadvantage for the loser bracket. So the way it works, Vivo, is um, Sauron is in the grand finals from the winner bracket. And let's, for example, assume that Maru is going to be able to defeat Mustafa. And that means in the grand finals tomorrow, Maru has to win against Sauron two times best of nine. But if Sauron is able to win the first best of nine, the tournament is going to be over and Sauron is going to be the champion. That's going to give, of course, the player from the winner bracket the advantage. But that's kind of okay, because he was undefeated until now. Sauron will have like a second life, like everybody else did. They do secret things together, hey man. Was this actually a Lone Tower summon? Nope, that's Lone Tower, I mean that's a battle tower from the Dwarven faction which he was building up. But it's gonna be hard to take it down. He has to focus down the Lorian warriors. Does he have rebuild? Uh, nope, that means it's gonna be taken down. Or, look at this hobbits, my friend. Look at this hobbit, throwing rocks, that's pretty <laughs> nice, nice, nah, he kills so much, it's worth it. Look, Haldir is a mean one, he's slaying the hobbits from the Shire. Sam, I don't care about Frodo too, <laughs> glory almighty, almighty, and I want to just Sam uh, to be in a safe spot. Dwarves are so useless, yeah, Peter, they are not very strong right now, I agree on that one. Almost level 5 already. That alone is the, the the fact that Haldir is a bit better than King Brand. You know, giving leadership is always nice. Battle Wagon soon? Yes, Battle Wagon soon. Forge works up on the field and the first hero is going to be Glorfindel. On foot, on horse I mean. He's gonna be a nice hero against those Battle Wagons. You can chase them down all the time. And Glorfindel with the Wind Rider, he's gonna be the fastest hero in the game. We might get them 10 games then. Hopefully not. You know, today I want to see actually factions like Mordor, uh, Engmar and Men of the West. Those three factions, I wouldn't mind to see them multiple times. But I can't see elves or goblins anymore, you know. 
We have seen them so many times in the entire tournament. It's like randomized. The chances are one out of seven, but I, f I believe like goblins were like every second game. Level five unlocked. More gobos, please. Come on, dude. <laughs> I mean, goblins are like literally. It's like a one faction tournament so far. Slap shot. Slap shot in the back line. Nice one. King Brand doing a nice job. And also the Beastly arrow can be nice in this matchup against Ants and also against the Eagles. Like when you special summon the Eagles with the Elven faction and this guy is level 7, the Beastly arrow is going to be able to one shot the end from 100 to 0. Talking about the power points, the Elven player was able to get heal, rallying call and 15 power points after that. Now he has the choice to go for the Elven Wood or for the Mist. I would go for the Mist in this kind of situations. Why? Because Mist is leading you to the Eagle Summon. And Eagle Summon, once again, is like, in most cases, better than the End Summon. But if you want to go for the Ends, you need to get the Elven Wood. Which is also not bad in this matchup, because Dwarves have no land. Like, Dwarves and Men of the West are the two factions in the game. They have no land, unlike all the other factions. Like, Engma has Frozen Land, Goblins and more. They have Tainted Land, same as with Isengard. And Elves have the Elven Wood. But Dwarves and Men, they have no, they are landless. Oh, this guy is diving in. Slap shots. Nice. Oh my, look how many units he killed. That's why slap shot is so nice. Rallying call has been used. This guy is going to hit level 3 very soon. It's going to unlock the Blade of Purity. Heal has been used. Blade of Purity. And now he's almost immune to damage. Not really. 50% damage reduction is still huge. And he will just hit multiple units at the same time. And dwarves have to give up this area. Nope, he's going to bring more units now. But that's nice for Glorfindel. He's gonna kill so many units at the same time. Battle Wagon is coming into the backline. Beautiful trample into the Lorien archers. Mist is going to be used to nullify enemy leadership bonuses from the statue. And make them weaker. But heal is on cooldown. It means Blade of Purity is gonna run off very soon. And Glorfindel might be in trouble. Just kidding. He is still in a really, really good spot. Like, look how many units he's able to kill at the same time. Level 4 already unlocked. Haldir is doing a nice job. Battle Wagon is getting into the backline once again. Trampling down yet another battalion. But he's running it down into the pikeman. The tower is coming up. What is going on? King Bran is inside the jeans. As well as one extra over. But it looks like he will not be able to save this area. The tower is up. But it's going to be taken very soon. Taken down very soon. He's going to try to place those hobbits inside. But before you do that, always put them on aggressive stance. To maximize the DPS. But the tower is going to be taken down regardless. Haldir, Glorfindel... And then a bunch of units. Look, the tower is going down in like... Oh, the barrage on your face, son! <laughs> I didn't see that coming, to be honest with you. But, I mean, come on. Like, it was not the best barrage. It's not effective against heroes. And he killed like two pikemen. So, it's not the best thing in the world. They have also Gloin on the field. Level 3 already. 17 power points collected after the mist. He has enough power points for the Eagle Summon. The King Brand is only level 6, but he's gonna get level 7 eventually. And once again, that's a huge power spike against Eagles. One more hit. Oh my goodness. He didn't get it yet. Oh, not even close. Like, once again, the Eagles, they're gonna die. One of the Eagles is gonna die to one single shot. Who's the Elves? Maru. The colors are also matching with the scoreboard. So green, the album player is Maru. We come from Almost 18 power points collected. 860 command points. He has even some units around this side recovering over time. Battle Wagon, Rallying Call, big commitment. Battle Wagon has to be careful. Oil Battle will be used to deal damage over time around the area. The fire on the ground is damaging. Eagle Summon is going to be unlocked now from the spellbook. Is he going to use it around this area? That's the big question. Where is King Bran when we need him? He is finally level 7 and I will get the chance to show you guys... The mighty beast slayer arrow in action. Hobbits are hitting like a truck against uh, against heroes, by the way. They are extremely effective against heroes, so keep that please in mind. Don't be surprised if you lose your heroes to the hobbits. Size doesn't matter everything. That's what some people are saying. I don't mind that because, come on, now, me? For me? I mean, come on now. Um, 960 command points only. Actually, not only. Om almost 1000 command points is what I'm trying to say. Level 7, come on. I want to see that. I want to see the Eagle Summon. Come on now. Actually, Alvin play, uh, Dwarven player has 13 power points after the barrage already. King Brian is running for his life, but he's not faster than Glorfindel. Glorfindel is so fast. Oh, he's leaving the daddy of Gimli around. Alone. 
Just use the shake foundation. You can't survive this. Or can he? Oh, never mind. There comes the reinforcement. Even Man of the Hill. But Glorfindel is like the Dwarven Slayer. I wouldn't kill him because if you kill him, he's gonna summon his son. And his son is a hero killer. He has, I mean, Gimli has to be the most effective hero against other heroes. The Eagle summon. Does he heal? Heal his own cooldown. Glory might be in trouble. And he has nothing to kill these eagles. Where is King Brand when we need him? Is King Brand inside the mineshaft? Yes, he is inside the mineshaft, but there is no mineshaft nearby. Get him out and use the Beast Lay Arrow already. Gloin has been taken down. Glorfindel is hitting level 5. And now the eagles can actually deal more and more damage. You need to get King Brand and show us the damage output from the Beast Slayer Arrow. Mirkwoods, they are protected. He's gonna use the King Brand to deal with this army. Slapshot! Slapshot! I could, should be using the Slapshot in the middle to hit more and more units. Use your Beast Slayer Arrow. Use it. Use it. Why doesn't you... He's actually losing so many units for no reason. He could have just used the Beast Slayer Arrow already. Like the level 3 matchup is going to be taken down as well. Let's see if Rebuild. He could go for it. Nor is he early. He arrives precisely when he means to. He arrives precisely when he means to. But Indra, welcome back, my dude. He has to use Rebuild. This King Brand is idle. He's on vacation or something. He doesn't do anything. It would hurt me so much if he loses this Mineshaft. But I believe he's going to be able to save it. As the Eagles are gunners. Alvin player is now pushing from the bottom side. Home sweet home. Good talking there. Very true. If also Arvin on the field is the third hero from the Alvin player. But he will out eventually outscale this, you know. Men of Teal are not bad, but they are not as strong as the Mirkwoods. In, you know, no way. They are. They can't match the Mirkwoods. Mirkwoods are just too powerful. Oh, but nice trample. I like that. He's looking for Aneda. Nice. Beast Lay Arrow against anything else, but Beast is not very effective. The Battle Wagon has been taken down. Rallying Call has been used. Glorfindel is actually on the hand. He's looking for a chance to get... Never mind, he's running for his life. That's what he's doing. Planking, be beautiful. Kill the Mirkwoods in those kind of situations first. Kill the most expensive unit slash heroes if you have the chance to do, to do so, you know? Level 3 Mineshaft is unprotected. Blade of Purity for 100% damage boost. That's gonna make him hit like an absolute track. Dwarves have to try to keep this mineshaft protected because he's down to 725. Losing this is gonna drop him down to 625 only. And it's going down, ladies and gentlemen. It's going down. Arvin is level 3. She has Atelas, which means sustain for the nearby allied heroes around her. And you will also eventually need Banakiri upgrades on your Man of the Hill to unlock the Black Arrows, which can deal great amount of damage to a single target. On top of that, it's gonna also be allowing you to extend your range for a short duration. Elves are so fast. I mean, that's true, but also dwarves are extremely slow, you know? That's the biggest problem. Dwarves are so slow. In this matchup, you can feel the difference. Like, elves are one of the most mobile uh, factions with goblins together. And the elven heroes are extremely fast. And you have, like, those dwarven heroes like King Dane, Gloin, Gimli, and even King Brand. They can't keep up with the speed. It's not possible. Okay. So he's gonna be just running to the army, right? Yeah, he's in a good spot. We have 725 for, uh, for dwarves and 1000. Look the money from elves. Do you see that? He has 3k, which means he has enough now for Legolas or Tranduil. Level 4 unlocked. 23 power points. The flood is coming very, very soon, guys. From the Spellbook of Elves. And since uh, Mustafa went for the dwarven riches... You want to have the 25. I mean, also the 25 from the Elven faction is way better. Like, Flat is better than Summon Sitter and Earthquake combined. You know what I'm saying? And the Sunflare is also pretty nice. So I would choose the 25 from the Elves every day of the week over the 25 from the Dwarves. And also Elves have better Summons. Eagle Summon is way better than Men of Deal Summon in many, many situations. If also End Summon, you know? Rallying Call. Oh, he's gonna get 25 here, right? So that, watch now what's gonna happen, guys. We're gonna take a look into the current power points from dwarves, uh, from elves. I mean, sorry. Yeah, look, he has now enough power points. Just use the flat right here, kill all these three buildings, and then just damage the fortress. Commit against that. Beautiful trample into the backline. Hobbit summon missed big commitment in this fight. Everyone is going all out. Kill is available for the worst case, and elven heroes have a lot of sustain. 
The flood! You see, watch the evil away from this lands. One shotting literally everything. And dwarves are down to what? 625. He has not a single production building left on the field anymore. He has some mineshafts up at the bottom side. And also around the top right side. But he has nothing to keep this fortress protected as King Dane is fallen into, into darkness. Cloudbreak has been used too. Or is this from Haldir? That was from Haldir, the Golden Arrow. He's also dealing a lot of damage to a single target. I believe it was able to one-shot the King Brand almost. Elves are victorious once again. And Maru is shining bright like a diamond. Mustafa is not gonna say a single word. He's gonna leave the game. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Gimli was wrong. He was saying me the best dwarf. But in this case, elves are victorious. Mustafa against the green man of the best player, Maru. Who is having a phenomenal performance in this best of seven series so far. Farm into the second farm. We see mill into the second mill. If Mustafa loses that, Maru will get the chance to win the series in the upcoming game. And for that reason, trust me, you don't want to fall 3-0 behind. Because that's going to make put pressure on you and you will have to win four games in a row without being able to afford to lose a single one anymore. So mill, mill, mill. Three mills before anything else. Mara about to build a wall to make Russia great again. <laughs> we will see about that. We will see about that. Vorchan is, is going to be chosen from Engma. He's building now the f Hall of the Kingsmen, of course. I mean, Engma doesn't have too many choices early on. We have two, bar uh, two farms into the barracks and third farm at the very same time. So pretty normal start from the Man of the West player. A bit of an economical start from the Engma player on the other side. Normally you see two mills into the Hall of the Kingsmen, but in this one we saw three mills. It's not the end of the world. This kind of, uh, you know, you can always try something different, but I'm not a huge fan of getting four or five mills because that's going to be pretty delete and you will have your units on the field very, very late and this might go for a big punishment. Your opponent might be punishing you big time for that reason, you know? Gundabad warriors are also weaker in compared to the soldiers of Gonza. So you need to outspam them. It looks like Maru... The man of the West player is gonna start with the Rohan Spearman units. I'm assuming his plan is to creep this troll there. The golem is also lurking around. So if hopefully that's gonna happen eventually in one of the games. That we hopefully will get the chance to see a ring hero like Sauron or Galadriel. Creeping 101. Nothing special. Use the build as a bait. Make the troll follow him. And as he's going back to his homeland. He will be bullied by the pikemen. Take this, take this, tuk, 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 tuk. And good creeping. He was taking some damage, but it's fine. They're gonna hit level 2 after this one. And he will also be able to re uh, to capture this in, Which will, you know, give him the chance to recruit some of the Galadrim warriors. Which are the most expensive in units in the game, if I'm not mistaken. Because 400 each. Wunderbats are leading forward. The wall hub is gonna body block them. He might use Warchant for this one, though. Oh, never mind. He doesn't want to take the fight. This game result is may determine to the tournament winner. I mean, the tournament is not going to be won by Maru or by Mustafa in the end of this series because the player is going to move on to the grand finals. This is only the finals of the loser's bracket. And the winner of this one has to play against Sauron to win the tournament. That's going to happen tomorrow at 8 p.m. GMT plus 2. Does Fieri still play? Not seen him in ages. He was actually signing up for the tournament, but he was not around for a long time. I, I believe he was on vacation. And for that reason, we were kind of forced to skip his games, you know? In order to make progress. And I don't like those events being dragged so long. And hopefully, in the future events, you need to you just sign up when you are able to play, when you have time to play. When you know you're going to be on vacation in like... Four, four days for like two weeks. We can't afford to wait for anybody two weeks long, you know? It's not possible. But I believe Fairy is back on the field. We have the first battle of the game. Wolfpack's on the field as, a, as the best counter unit to the pikemen. You will see what I mean. The chance they, when, once they get the chance to attack this pikemen, they can eat them alive. You see that one-shotting? And the unique part about this wolf packs is that they are a mobile counter to the pikemen. So running away from them is not an option most of the time. Especially with the heavy spike collar upgrades, they're gonna become also quite tanky. Even though they got nerfed in the patch we are using right now. 350 command points for Ingmar, 400 command points for Men of the West. Farm here has been taken down. And Benny Tamim, thanks for the follow, appreciate that. Hope you're gonna enjoy your stay. Welcome to the streamer, dude. 
Galadium Warriors, but Trample is incoming. Very well, Trample. Look how much damage he was able to deal. And also, oof, mate. Thanks for the follow. Oh, don't run into the Pikeman like that. That's a bad thing, dude. He took so much damage there, guys. And that's 400 resources gone. That's what I'm trying to tell you, guys. They are so expensive, those uh, Galadium Warriors. He was cancelling them. Draw your swords. What patch is being played on right now? They are using the 2.02 version 8.4 beta 14. Ingma having now the upper hands definitely in the game number 3 for Mustafa. One more beautiful trample is incoming. That's the power of Ingma. The early transition possibility you have into the wolf den. Which gives you the chance to get those wolf packs and wolf riders on the field. Really early into the game, you know. Very, very powerful from the Ingma faction. How many power points does he have? Almost the power points now. Here's the power points for the Felwind. And he will be also winning this fight. And that means the farm is going to be taken down right after. And also important to mention is the fact that during all this time, Engma is untouched. Like he's in a phenomenal place. Mills are in a safe spot. He can just snowball his lead. Get more and more units on the field. Farm is going down. Gondonites, they can't really compete with only one of them being around. He might go for a trample though, because he has no pikemen around. The thing is, when you go for a trample, your units are gonna be slowed down. That's gonna give the enem enemy player the chance to chase you down with the wolf riders. Almost 6 power points collected, only 4 power points for Men of the West player Maru. Archer range level 1 for the Gondor archers, but they might not be good enough. You might need the rangers later on from the level 2, but you can see his money at the bottom left of your screen. He has no money to do all the things we just talked about. Rallying call is available. I believe he was never using it, if I'm not mistaken. He might use that now in the middle of the map, but he's getting outnumbered big time. Oh, Felvind, sucked him in. Don't use now. Oh, he's using it anyway, but he's outnumbered. On the night, get into the backline. You need to trample down those extrovers. That's gonna be also his plan. You see Waldman of Tanlin, they are being recruited from the inn at the top left side, by the way, if you are wondering. Okay, Gondor Knights are doing a good job, but they are also badly damaged. And that's gonna force the Man of the West player Maru to build a well now. Like he already does. To sustain over time. That's the power of the good faction, you know? Good factions, like Man of the West, Dwarves and Elves. Remember in Rise of the Witch King, we have four evil factions. Ingmar, Isengard, Goblins and Mordor. But only three good factions, Elves, Men of the West and Dwarves. So lots of pressure on Men of the West play definitely. Ingmar is building up an army worthy of Mordor. He might always go for the level 2. Wolf Den for the Snow Trolls instead of the normal Wolf Packs. But he might also go for the transition into the level 3 Hall of the Kingsmen for the Dark Rangers. Just take a look into the minimap in the meantime. You'll see that uh, the map is mainly red. Which is the color of Ingmar. We need also Eomer on the field. In this matchup, Eomer is not bad because of the spear throw. And also, Eowyn is not bad. Especially right now, because nice snipe on the Trailmaster. Very well done. Especially now, because uh, Engma has only Trailmaster units on the field, right? He has only Trailmaster units. And Eowyn can one-shot any single one of them with the smite. By targeting the Trailmaster, you can kill the entire battalion. But he has not enough money to do that, of course. He's almost command points capped too. He keeps losing those farms left and right. Hey, hey, hey. Guys, in this kind of situation, just attack the wall up. Trust me. The wall up is extremely tanky, but they have pillage. Which means every time they attack enemy buildings, they're gonna get money. So, attack the wall up and you will grow rich. Not only you are growing rich, but you're also making your enemy broke. As you steal the money from him all the time. It's a huge Engma army. Holy guacamole. He's getting outnumbered big time. Look at the army size. Getting now into the backline for a juicy trample. Very well done from Mustafa. Man of the West player is getting outnumbered. Out microed, out macroed. He's peeling back. He's trying to make it to the statue. But I think during this time he's losing his the majority of his army. The build is gonna be eaten alive. Looks like meets back on the menu, boys. Nope, not today. The build is saying yabba dabba do and out are you. 7 power points collected, Gondonites are peeling back. Look at the pressure. 
The pressure is real. Like, he's trying to flank, but he's getting once again outnumbered, you know? Rangers a little bit too late. You need frontline for them to keep them protected. The pikemen in the porcupine formation are gonna do the work. It's a frozen land, which is gonna be the only possible way for the Engma to get leadership. Felvind! Catch those condonets before they could go for a trample. Rallying call has been used. Warchant for the double bath. Remember, the frozen land is leadership, and Warchant is a bath that's able. These are able to stack with each other. What a fiesta! What's going on? Holy moly! I mean, you are called to war, but you are too late for war, my friend. Scout for Gondol, all you need. All you can. What a massacre. The builder has been taken down. Google those will know. Thanks for the follow, appreciate that. Hope you can enjoy your stay. Welcome to the stream. Archer range is going down as well. He has almost a power point for the Lone Tower. He might use it defensively and put those ranges inside of that. Let's see if this is gonna be the case. He's using the long shots, but enemy units are moving. It's not gonna kill too many units, only a couple of pikemen. What is this gonna what is he gonna choose with 10? I mean doesn't really do anything, right? He lost a lot. Like all the farms he's down to 400 command points, and he has barely any units remaining on the field. One of the last remaining level 2 farms. And if he loses that, he's gonna drop down to 325, and then loses that, he's gonna drop down to 250. GG's gonna be called from Maru, and that's it, ladies and gentlemen. The first victory for Mustafa in the best of seven. And we got ourselves a series now. Maru got Mordor, that's great. There is a show coming up. Let's see, my friend Pascal. Two slaughterhouses coming up for Maru into the orc pits, and third slaughterhouse at the same time on the other side. He's also using the Eye of Sauron to scout the area. We will have two Malone trees into the stable, and Maru is able to see that. He knows Lancers are coming very soon. That's why he might go for a transition into the Haradrim Palace for the Easterlings a bit faster. And once again, Vision is a powerful tool, because otherwise he would potentially build the second Orc Pit instead of the, instead of the Haradrim Palace as a counter building to recruit some counter units against the Revander Lancers. We need to place the bats and close bats, then choose factions and map just my opinion. Yeah, some, something like that. I mean, what I'm doing is always we are giving you guys the points the second the game ends and you have only one minute time. In the one minute we are spinning the wheel, so you shouldn't get too many informations, you know? Someone please hack me, give me 20,000 points. Uh, I think it's not possible. <laughs> we have two Malone trees, stable, into the third Malone tree. It's gonna be a stable delete, question mark? It's not gonna be a stable... Yeah, it's gonna be a stable delete. It means Mustafa is gonna have those lancers for the majority of the game. He has to keep them alive and protected. Mordo, is, Mordo knows what's going up, what's going on. That's why he's gonna play it a bit more defensively. Easter links are gonna be on the field a little bit too late. Don't run into them, though. Don't run into them, though. He's pressing S to make them stop just in the perfect possible timing. And now he has to be careful. Mordo is gonna camp it out early on. Which kind of makes sense in this matchup, you need to play a bit more passively in order to survive the early game of Mordor. And that's only possible if you can make sure that you can protect your slaughterhouses. Very, very imp- <laughs> Maru with the random builder. Water attack. Like the Pokemon, you know? What is the name of the Pokemon in English? Squeezer or something like that. Aqua attack! How was that? Lorian warriors and more Lorian warriors are coming up at the same time. They might not be on the field just in time. Yeah, but if you if the odds are low for one person, everyone will vote on one faction, which means they will gain less. If one person bets and wins, he will win. He will win everything. Yeah, I mean you have a, you have a, a you know that's also a point of course, but I believe like knowing the players and of course Maru and Mustafa, you already know them, and just you know listening to your six cents. Makes makes it a bit more fun, you know? It's about fun with, with gambling, in my opinion. You can also wait until a couple of people are betting to see how many people are betting on the one certain player. And if you want to go risky, you can just go all out in the second player to win more and more points. One, the Malone tree has been taken down, but it's okay. Orion Warriors also buffed from the Rallying Call. I will be used, but that's not going to make you win this fight. You will still lose this fight. He knows that, he's trying to get to the Malone tree, but that's not gonna be possible, he's getting body blocked hardcore. And Lorian Warriors, they're gonna one-shot them, especially when they are in the aggressive stance, they are extremely squishy. 
But one more group of units coming now to the second Malon tree around this side. And this one has no protection. He has no archers on the field just yet. And that means this one is going to be definitely taken down. And during all this time, Mordor is untouched. He might go for the Haradrim Palace level 2. For the Haradrim Lancers very soon. What is happening? Every streamer has set game on Age of Empires 2 or Diablo 2. What? What is happening? Every streamer has set game on Age of Empires 2 or Diablo 2. Really? I mean, I, I, I haven't. Because uh, I believe they added like a new Diablo 2 game, you know? I already got an email from Blizzard. Since I am also owning Diablo 3. About the Diablo 2 Resurrections or something like that. What a big attack is incoming, dude. Look the damage output. And the thing about Diablo is there is always a huge hype every season that lasts only for like two weeks and then the hype is gone and they are losing like 80% of the player base and 90% of the viewer base, you know? Diablo is like a game they are working with seasons. Like there is a season and there is like meta in the season. You need to build this character with these items to make it great and work. And then people are just interested in playing, to the, playing this game for like two weeks every single day. And after those two weeks, the game is already played, you are bored, and you are just moving on. Diablo 2 Remake, yeah. You haven't, that's the reason why I'm here. <laughs> nice. I mean, I don't like it when people are playing a certain game, but they are using a different name. I hate this. I hate this when this, when anybody does that, you know what I'm saying? I'm already sad enough that they removed the Rise of the Witch King category from Twitch. But it's okay, you know, Battle for Middle-earth 2 is the mother game, you know what I'm saying? It's like the main game, and the Rise of the Witch King is an expansion. And I believe Twitch wanna only add the games which are standalone games, you know? Like, so standalone game means, means, for example, that you are able to play Rise of the Witch King without the need of BFMA 2, which is definitely not the case. I is on cooldown 450 for Mordor, and 450 for Elves for Mustafa. He has nearly 5 power points collected, Rallying Call is available. We will never let Lord of the Rings fall. The day may come when the Lord of the Rings fall, but it is not this day. And they want $40 for a game where they just replace textures. I think it's a bit expensive for just like that. Uh, it, a bit. It's like, it's like, you know, it's like when you are doing that, that's kind of nuts. Then you are like rich, like you are an oil prince. And you are investing 40 bucks into that. It's a lot of money. It's a lot. Like nowadays, in which video games are mainly for free, Investing 40 bucks for a super old game with just like a redesign is kind of nuts. I mean, they're also trying to make money, right? That's what they are trying to do. They're always trying to use the nostalgic feeling. And trust me, when like any company would come and say, we are making now Biff Me to remake. And they are just adding like a HD edition with like a couple of more new design. And they are charging you 50 bucks. People are going to still buy that. Why? Because it's a nostalgic game. So they, the company is going to make thousands and thousands of millions of dollars, actually. So, of course, they are always thinking about business, you know, how to make the most value, how to get the most value of anything they are doing. Guys, I'm actually thinking about uh, buying myself the iPhone 13 Pro, guys. I haven't bought any, f any new phone for a long time. I have a really old phone, you know. And I'm really thinking about that. On the one side, I'm saying, you know what? Let me let me buy this one time and I will be happy. On the other side, it hurts me to invest that much money into a phone. I don't know, guys. What do you think? What should I do? Should I buy it? iPhone 13 Pro with the great camera. Looks nice. Looks dope. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's the best phone out there right now. But investing like 1,200 euro for a phone kind of seems a little bit too much. So far, you are using Android? No, I'm using iPhone 7. I, I'm kind of forced to use iPhone because I have iWatch, you know, the clock, the watch. And I don't want to miss that because I like my watch. So I'm kind of stuck, uh, forced to use the iPhone. And my iPhone is pretty old. It's already, like, really doomed, you know. So I want to have an upgrade. But once again, investing this much money kind of, kind of feels bad, man. All this recurrent phone, like 
five years, something like that, five or six years. Yeah, it's it's really expensive. That's what I'm trying to tell you. It's very like, oh my god, but it's this push from Maru. He's making so much so much happen. Maybe wait to buy in January might be cheaper. That's the thing about iPhone, you know, they won't make it cheaper until the new one is coming out. So I mean, I won't I won't I won't pay this much money. Like there are deals in Germany, for example, you pay like fifty bucks a month. And then you you get the phone. You need to. It's like a contract for two years, guys. And in those two years, you pay like fifty bucks, and you get the phone at the end of the two years. And you have also like a new number. You have like unlimited uh, internet connection on your phone, mobile, and also you can call anywhere you want for free. So you have no additional cost. You know, you pay one one time the fifty bucks. You get the new card, new con new contract, and you can talk to you know. You have internet. Unlimited, you have, you know, you can talk, message, SMS, everything is for free. Everything is included in one single price. I mean, I won't invest like 1200 euro instantly, you know. It would be kind of nuts. I, I know, but it's like, the problem is, I believe when you use one time an iPhone, I've, I've been using now iPhone, I was using iPhone 4, 5 and 7. I'm now, that's my third iPhone I'm using now for many, many years. And because of that reason, I'm always like having an iWatch, you know? And this watch is gonna only work with iPhones. You can't use that with an Android phone. And I don't know, I feel like when you use iPhone for many, many years, going then to an Android phone, I don't know, it doesn't feel the same for me, you know? Yeah. Overpriced, but uh, the new camera they are having out now is just really phenomenal. All right, uh, that's a siege works offensively building up next to the Alvin base. Mustafa might be in a big, big problem. 675 for Mordo and 400 only for elves. The day of elves is over, guys. The age of the orcs has come. I believe Mustafa. I believe Mustafa will be defeated and. That's like really bad because Maru will get the chance to win this series in the upcoming game. Mordo just feels extremely powerful right now. I mean, what do you guys think? Like, from that, what we have seen so far in this tournament, I believe like Mordo is the strongest faction. What do you guys think? What do you guys agree? I mean, I would dream about it. It would be the best case scenario if. Any company, any real company comes up with a brand new battle for Middle Earth game. They would be just like the dream, you know what I'm saying? I like to have phone in a price that if I drop it and destroy it, I would not be sick for two weeks because of that. Dude, when I drop my phone, when I pay this much money, I will be sick for two years. Not two. Not two weeks. Trust me on that one. Like, it's like throwing out of the window 1200 euro, you know? It's a lot of cash. In Germany, it's a lot of cash. In Turkey, it's like a house. I'm normally a person I don't like to invest that much money, but my phone is really in a horrible situation, you know? The camera is not working that's great anymore. It's like full scratch, you know? Like the glass in the front side is looking dirty, but from, from the inside, you know? You can't clean this anymore, so it's like bugged. Some of the touch screen is not working properly anymore as well, so... Yeah. It's pretty bad, and I wanted to let it repair it, and it's also very expensive. You need to pay like 300 euro for <laughs> repairing the phone, which costs like 500 euro when you want to buy it. You know what I'm saying? The Ram is going to be taking down the album player still in a in the game. It's archers. It's, they are trying to take down this roll, but it's kind of easier said than done. I, iPhone X or 11? Yeah, maybe. Maybe I'm going to do that too. Yeah, like I'm a lot on my phone, you know what I'm saying? Like, for example, when I'm not in my PC, I'm trying to make a research, I'm trying to find some funny pictures, thumbnails, images, I'm always investing lots of time on my phone. And it's kind of driving you crazy when it's not working, that's great, you know? When you have to click multiple times and then it's packed out, you need to restart your phone. I, I believe they are making that knowingly, you know? They know 
they want to force you to buy a new phone, you know what I'm saying? Nobody can tell me, like, if you buy a brand new phone after, like, four years, this phone is just outdated. You know? It's just not sported anymore. I believe they are trying to break the game, break the phone, in, you know, intentionally, to, you know, force you to buy a new one. 875 command points for Mordor and 600 for Elves. 10 power points almost collected. He, needed, he needs the Eagles if he wants to be able to defend this attack, but he's far from it. Uh, he needs still 5 power points for that. He chases... What is he doing? He's chasing the one single troll around the bottom right side. Need big screen so I can play Heyday comfortably. <laughs> oh, big commitment, guys. That's the last remaining barracks. It will be eventually taken down. Yeah, definitely. Look, it's going down in no time. Orcs for days. Orcs for days. If also black orcs now, that's gonna be a different story. This is no rubble of mindless orcs. These are black orcs. In Vamyora, this one is for you, my friend. Look, in Vamyora is always using this guy. And this dude is looking like Lord Voldemort, guys. Look, he has no nose. What the heck? The age of men is over. The time of the orc has come. You know how this guy is looking like? Guys, you, you see this dude? The Gothmog? Look his picture. This guy is... You know what this guy is looking like? Do you guys know Freddy, Freddy Krueger? Do you guys remember the guy? From Nightmare on Elm Street? Exactly the same guy. He's like looking like his, his face is burned, you know what I'm saying? Like he looks like Freddy Krueger to me. One, two, Freddy comes to you. 12, almost 13 power points collected. He's trying to stall until the Eagle Summon, I guess. He is still two power points away, but he's surrounded. Like, he's being attacked from multiple sides at the same time. And he has one single army, which he can't afford to split. Arvin is only level one. And he will have to give up everything around this area. I mean, you guys know, right? The Nightmare of Elm Street, which was the first horror movie I was able to watch. I remember the day I was like, what, five or six years old, I believe. And my parents wanted to watch this, and they thought I'm sleeping, but I was not sleeping, I was a ninja, you know, when I was a child, I was like a ninja, guys. I was always like a tricky guy, you know what I'm saying? I was always pretending like I'm sleeping, but I was not sleeping. <laughs> then I was just watching it in secretly, and after watching it, I was so scared, dude. I was putting a knife below my pillow, you know, because I felt like if, if, if Freddy Krueger is gonna come to my nightmares, I'm prepared, you know what I'm saying? I have knife under my pillow. I can defend myself, you know? I was so scared. For like multiple weeks. It was Night of the Living Dead. Didn't watch this one, I guess. Mustafa is not gonna say a single word, and this game is also gonna be over, ladies and gentlemen. It's a 3 1 for Maru now, and he needs only one more victory. We have the green Man of the West player Maru at the right side against the red Engmar player Mustafa on the left. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is the Forts of Brunen. Looks like that. Pretty beautiful map, troll layers, protecting those ins at the bottom and also at the top side. If also a war clear. Vagonda! 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 I mean, the sound effect is nice, but it's just too loud. It's always making me jump out of my chair when this happens, guys. Two mills, Hall of the Kingsman is coming up for Ingma. Ingma is just pretty balanced because it's uh, it's the favorite race of one of the member of balance team, that's all. <laughs> I mean... Certainty of for Gondor. Small chance of for Gondor. What are we for Gondor for? What are we for Gondor for? <laughs> no problem, Dragon. For example, are there sanctions for a player who is too late to be ready? What do you mean? I missed the context. What do you mean? Let me check what you was typing. I don't know what the context is. Uh, Red Army. No, don't know what we are talking about. Everybody say for Gondo, but nobody says for Ingma. Everybody is saying for Gondo, but nobody is asking how Gondo. Mare lost this game and lost this game and doesn't blame the game like people think he deserves it until the end. No, I mean like, dude, when you need to take a small break and you need to go to the P and we need to wait for you two minutes until you are clicking on ready, I mean. That's not like uh, dictatorship here, you know what I'm saying? They are always showing tolerance, you know? The only rule is literally that you are... 
when you are signing up for an event that you should be at least able to play once a week. That's what, what is required. And again, we are always showing tolerance, which is very small community and we can't be harsh with those rules. You know what I'm saying? Engma is kind of broken. I mean, it's not about Engma being broken. It's about some matchups being extremely weak, you know? We have early barracks coming up for the Man of the West player. So he was already able to creep the Strolley at the top right side. That's gonna give him the chance to once again recruit some Galadrim warriors. Oh, never mind. He's gonna be potentially just in time to protect the soldiers against the trample. Ralinko. Oh, nice bait. You see this baiting? That's a baiting. Next level. Just disengage now. Don't commit. Just disengage. Just wait for the rallying call to turn off. Just wait. Um, I mean, I don't agree with Mr. Balin, by the way, because the thing is, if you laugh this game, like, if you laugh your woman or your kid, are you not allowed to criticize what is not that good about, the, about your child when your child is making a mistake? Are you not allowed to say, hey, this is not a good thing what you guys are doing, what you did? So I believe, like, when you criticize a faction because you feel like that's weak, that doesn't mean that you don't love the game. You know what I'm saying? It make, that actually means the other way around, that, that you actually care about this game, to talk about it. Because you feel like something is messed up and something has to be changed. Like, that's what I don't understand. You fool. No man can kill me. That's what, I, that's what I personally feel like, you know? I won't criticize anything when I don't care about that. And when I care about that, I will criticize. And I'm criticizing certain things which doesn't make any sense to me. Like, Men of the West, for example, being a very weak faction for ages. And then you have a buff like, Soldier speed is increased from 22 to 22.5. It's not gonna change too much, brother. Oh, the Builder is getting sniped down. Nice. Hey, hey, Phoenix. Um, can somebody time out this Phoenix, please? I don't understand. Some people are literally making me question about the uh, human brain, you know? Coming to the chat and look his first first message in the chat, guys. How embarrassing is that? <laughs> I don't get that, really. Some people are just making me question the world and the entire humanity. Ingma is gathering a huge army and leading for an attack. Balin is on cooldown 400 command points and we have 400 command points for Ingma. So actually, Man of the West play is able to hold himself for now. But he is not able to get to the left side of the map, which is the side from Engma. I think Mustafa lost his motivation. I don't know, man. We will see. Like, he is going for an attack, you see? Stable up on the field for the Gondor Knights. And Mustafa, once again, has to win this game. Mar, Mar doing a better job than last game. Agreed. Definitely, he's holding himself a bit better in this one. And he was able to get a huge army now. And this attack is going to be hard to defend for Engma. Especially because Rallying Call is going to be up sooner than the War Chant. So by the time Men of the West play are reaching this spot, he will have the buff. But Engma won't have the buff to counter this attack. So let's see if he can actually defend himself. I think Rise of the Vision has just too many factions to great balance matchups. Um, yeah, I mean, that's kind of true. But once again, I've been around now for three years. And it's been always like that, that Men of the West faction was always one of the worst factions, you know? And the same factions were always kind of strong, like Elves and, and Engma and Mordor, they were always solid factions. And Man of the West was kind of always feeling bad, and that's what I'm trying to tell you. Like, I'm always pointing out the obvious thing about this, about this game. What I personally see, and I've been seeing and casting and commentating and hosting many, many tournaments in the past two and a half, three years. And when I tell you guys, I've been able to see competitive games, thousands of them, in those in this time I was just mentioning, and I have not seen Gandalf one time popping off, I have not seen Drogoff one time putting a difference, then maybe that should be as an input for small changes. Not small changes like, let's make Gandalf instead of 4,000, 3,950. That's not gonna change Gandalf. You know what I'm saying? And then you need to just take a risk and try to push him a little bit. You can always make him weaker in the next patch. Not about Gandalf only, you know, about the Witch King from Engma, Witch King of Mordor, those expensive heroes. And they don't have the impact they have to get. 
Snowbind has been used. It's a huge attack from Man of the West, by the way. And also, in the meantime, he's building up an army of Warfi of uh, Dienetor. That's pretty nice. Wait, Wait a moment. You remember a game when a guy had Gandalf level 10 in Galadriel versus Elves? Yeah, do you remember how tough this game still was to win? <laughs> and how long it took actually to get Gandalf to level 10? He was literally running around one hour long to kill this, 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 until he finally could make it to level 10. And once again, you will always remember this game, because that's one of the rarest things in this game. It happened so extremely rare that you will remember that like five years later and you will say, yeah, last time, yeah, last time was five years ago, you know what I'm saying? Theodine, the king, is on the field. I mean, I don't want to complain about that because I don't want to sound like I disagree with everything. I'm just pointing out what I'm able to witness myself, you know? And again, you, you don't need to agree with me, uh, but I feel like when you ever invest 5,000 into a, into a mighty hero, this hero should be mighty and should be game-changing. Because you know, I know, collecting 5 key resources is tough in this game. A uh, big rallying call. A war chain is gonna be used. Rallying call is on cooldown. That's gonna be a great commitment now for Ingmar. 600 command points for Man of the West and 625 for Ingmar. So actually pretty even right now in terms of command points. He has two Galadrim warriors on the field. Snow trolls from the level 2 wolf ten. Okay. Again, I mean everybody has their own opinion, you know? Theodin for leadership. And Engma has no nullifying leadership effect until you get Witch King on the field. Until you get Witch King level 2 or Sorcerers. You have the two Resurrections, he has 214,000 viewers. Because there is a company behind who is pushing the game. You can't be as powerful as Blizzard, you know, who is trying to push the game and ma messaging everybody who is using a, who is having a Blizzard account to let them know that, to let them know that they are uh, working on an update and making like big announcements and stuff like that before they release it, and in the release date, they are going full crazy with marketing stuff. We are a very small game, and there is no company behind us, so we are just doing it for fun. I mean, I'm already impressed that we have 160 viewers in the stream for a really old game like PFME, which is kind of insane amount of viewers for a super old, old game with no servers, no company support, nothing like that. Um, because let's be real, that's really insane. Like this many people. Beautiful trample. Men and goblins might be easy to balance, but dwarves will be difficult if not for a speed change, but that's so unique about them. And I don't know how you could buff them without making them so strong. You could buff them in many ways. Actually, I have many, many ideas how to buff them when you play dwarves. Like... Uh, Give me to find a found a really great solution. Like in Battle for Middle Earth 2, these guardians, once they hit level level 3, they're gonna be moving a bit faster. So levels have like interactions with the game, which doesn't exist in Rise of the Witch King at all. Like levels don't mean anything in BFME to the Rise of the Witch King. The only level difference is level 2 for sustain and level 5 for the fear resistant. And you get like some beast stats, but that's it. In BFME 2, the levels are interact having interactions, you know? Once the guardians are hitting level 3, they're gonna move 5% faster. Once they hit level 5, they're gonna move again 5% faster. Once they're level 7, they're gonna move again 5% faster. So this way, you're not only making the game more balanced because you will get give them the chance to move eventually a bit faster, but also, uh, your rallying call, for example, gives you movement speed boost on the Guardians. So they have, like, different stuff. Like, Warchan, for example, doesn't give you armor, but gives you more movement speed. So speeding up the game progress, you know, it's a great way of balancing that, for example. Because uh, in this game, it's not rewarding that much when you save your higher level units. I'm a BFME 1 player myself, and in BFME 1, the level up, the level advantage is actually massive. Like, a, like for example, a level 5 Gondor Knight can kill level 2 level, Gon, 2 level 1 Gondor Knights in no time. Level advantage doesn't mean too much here in this game. Here about, this game is about spamming, you know, spam units all the time, lose them, spam them, lose them, spam them, lose them, spam them, lose them, spam them, that's how this game is designed. 
I have not seen people trying to save that unit. They are running it down <laughs> and then just making a new army. They are running it down again and making a new army again. They are running it down again, making a new army again. Like a never ending story. Baldo, Rallying Call. And uh, that's a Tower Guard Battalion. So he's quite tanky with all crowns. Stands Rallying Call buff in the Porcupine Formation. He can absorb lots of damage and tank for ages. Even Voldo needs like multiple minutes to actually take them down. But Engma is doing a nice job. He's actually recovering. He's up to nine, uh, six, 75 command points. Sorry, not 9. And we have Tom Bombadillo summoned ready for the next fight. As Voldo is gonna be in trouble. Like Theorin. What is Voldo doing? Oh, Voldo is running it down. And look Theorin's level, boys. Almost level 6. Holy guacamole. Maru. Hey, hey. Guys, 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 guys. I want to I wanna see that. I want to see for death and glory. Theorin and Eomi are side by side. He's level 6. All he needs to do is get mounted and use the glorious charge. I mean, dwarves are very tricky faction with the mineshaft connections, similar to the goblins, but way slower than goblins. They are strong when they are finally able to commit. They have no late game scaling that much with the units. Um, we don't get to see, you know, like Men of Deal being a game-changing unit. The elite units, they are not very impactful, you know. For the White Tower. Seven power points collected after the Bombardier summon. So eventually, if you can get for the 15 and get Cloud Break, and you you, you use, com you know, Cloud Break in the combination with the uh, Sonic Song from Tom Bombardier, this can be also very efficient. But here's Black Numenorians now. The problem is Black Numenorians are no half throw swordsmen. Soldier Battalion at the ready. Tom Bombadil summon. Might be extremely powerful in this kind of situations. Where are the Gondor Knights at? Maybe get Rohirrim now from the stable level 2. The stable is only level 1 still. Oh, does he have Snowbind? Let me check. The Snowbind is available. He needs to use it now. There we go. Age to age, uh, forever. Thanks for the follow. Appreciate that. Hope you're gonna enjoy your stay. Welcome. Bombadillo. Bombadillo was messing up everything. We missed that. I was just paying attention around the level three mill. The Black Numenorians are running for their lives. Kaladin is being the difference. He's almost level seven. The King of Rohan. Yomi is also level two now. That's pretty nice. 12, almost 13 power points collected. I mean, actually, Mustafa was making many, many mistakes in this game. Um, which, of course, will be punished. You know, you get punished for the mistakes you are making. Kind of makes sense. And I was not expecting such an outcome of the series. I mean, this game isn't over yet. So anything can still happen. It's not like Man of the West play already won. Uh, he has a huge advantage though, 900 command points against 600, that's a lot, like 50% more uh, command points available against Engma as man, it's pretty, pretty impressive. And he has also Cloud Break now if he wants to. Like Cloud Break is very strong, you can stun the enemy units for multiple seconds, and you are good to go. Like Black Manorians, do they have the War Chant? It's available, he has to use it now. Level 5 Galadrim Warriors. Golden Knights are coming, use the Glorious Charge. Can you also summon the Rohirrim now? I, I'm not sure. If you can go for the Rohirrim summon after the Tom Bomber deal. I know you can go for the Cloud Break if you want to. He's gonna go for the Ranger summon instead. Rallying Call has been used before that. Should be using the Rallying Call and, you know, you should be using the summon and then Rallying Call all of them together, but it's fine. This is gonna be hard to defend now for Mustafa. It's a huge army and also these Rangers are able to use Long Shots, keep that in mind. Mustafa, what are you doing with my coins? <laughs> I, I might, I'm kind of confused too. I was not expecting from Mustafa this performance. I was expecting a little bit more than that. But you know what? Underdog was definitely Maru in my opinion. Mustafa is the more experienced player. Even though Maru is playing every single day for multiple hours. But it feels like that the uh, practice kind of, you know, made sense. Was worth it. And Maru is going to move on to the Grand Finals against Sauron, ladies and gentlemen. Which is very impressive. And it would be even more impressive if he can win against Sauron in the best of nine tomorrow. That would be kind of OP. 
Scripted, yes. <laughs> White summon. He has no snowbinds. Big commitment. Look at this army. Look at this damage. Look at this Russian player Maru. Mustafa is gonna lose the fortress, which is gonna make him lose the game. Nope. He has a whole of he has buildings around this side. That's why he's still alive. But he's down to 425 command points. Actually, look his money, guys. Like, he has over 2,000. He has some units coming from the top right side. He has even marketplace with Grand Harvest. We have Boromir. Now you can go for Gondo, guys. Now I don't mind. If you see this dude... Oh, he's gonna just call it GG and leave the game. What a phenomenal performance from the Russian player.